Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to this year's Green Alliance annual debate. Can fracking be sustainable? We did PLEG last week, we did the European policy the week before, we thought this week we do fracking. It's our retail offer of the year. <laughs> We're going to need gas. There's no scenario in this country where we're not using gas, probably for the next hundred years. If we go down the road of shale gas, we are once again locking ourselves into a very centralised energy system with power literally and metaphorically in the hands of the big six and the fossil fuel companies. Is it a game changer? If we can uh, use this shale gas, should we, for example, no longer aim to invest in a portfolio of low carbon technologies for power generation, which is the centrepiece of meeting the carbon budgets that we have in this country. Uh, whatever happens with shale gas, um, it, it is absolutely no substitute for uh, the uh, real work of increasing energy efficiency and developing renewables, uh, which has to be the fundamental focus of energy policy going forward in the long term. If it is possible to extract shale gas in the UK mitigate but not avoid those local problems, um, then I think we have every responsibility to explore that and to embark on doing that. So there's a benefit in using shale gas to meet gas demand in this country that's ongoing. There may be employment benefits which are attractive when the economy is working below capacity uh, and that may be important in local economic context uh, for anybody who can get the shale gas from the ground that's cheap and sell it at the market price, well, there's big profits which can benefit all of us in tax revenues as long as the government doesn't give all of those tax revenues away in tax breaks to get the industry off the ground. So, uh, Quite a number of energy intensive industries have become more energy efficient over the course of the last 10 years. Uh, they've reformed the way in which they do their processes, they've, and that's been partly a result of economics and partly a result of regulation. Uh, the carbon footprint of shale gas can be comparable to natural gas, and actually it can be lower than the carbon footprint of LNG, which is what we are increasingly importing in this country. We owe it to the population of the country, we owe it to families to achieve this energy transition to the renewable gas, nuclear, smart grid, energy efficiency, electric vehicle future in as cost-effective way as possible. Very tempting to look at America and say, well, the shale gas revolution over there, it's depressed the gas price. It could be the solution to our affordability issues here. And you've heard politicians recently say it's the main solution that we've got to affordability. Uh, they look at the, the industrial uh, aspect of this and, and the search for a growth story and say, well, we could have an industrial revolution in this country attracting energy intensive industries from all over the world because of shale gas. And there is no evidence to support that claim. If we ended up uh, lapsing into uh, unabated gas as uh, the base load means of producing our electricity. And there is a serious danger that that's where we might be heading. Uh, then uh, uh, that would be locking us in to carbon generating means of producing electricity uh, for many decades to come. We're investing in low carbon power generation technologies, we should still back a portfolio of those technologies, renewables, carbon capture and storage, and nuclear in order to address our challenges. That doesn't change with shale gas. We shouldn't be having a 90s style dash for gas uh, through the 2020s. That doesn't make economic sense. So, Actually, to be honest, I think the thing that will stop fracking in this country is actually none of the things we've been talking about so far tonight. It will be when Tory MPs in particular wake up to the fact that if their constituents don't like onshore wind farms, they are going to like lots and lots and lots of shale gas wells a heck of a lot less. I think that we're en route to a complete transformation of the world's energy system. So where we're coming from, this kind of centralised fossil fuel with some nuclear system, which is entirely dumb and analogue and not properly managed and extraordinary levels of waste, that is the energy system of the past. We are going to a system which is based on much higher levels of energy efficiency, a mix of renewable energy, uh, nuclear and gas on the supply side, with a smart grid, electric vehicles, much more intelligence, 
and as I say, energy efficiency on the demand side. 